Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to GoTo Cigars. I'm your host, Keegan Brown, and today we got a GoTo discussion. But this is a special one because we've officially reached 100 subscribers! Woo! <laughs> I could not do this without you guys. You guys are the reason I keep making content. I try and get good stuff out there for my subscribers and the viewers, and it's really awesome seeing this channel grow. I didn't expect it, you know, I made it earlier this year, and it's grown relatively quickly, I think, and I'm happy with the progress, so I'm going to keep making videos for guys, and hopefully you guys keep watching them. <laughs> so, today, we are talking about the embargo lift on Cuban cigars. Now, I know this is relatively old news, you know, this happened in the Obama administration, we already got Trump for, you know, a month now, and that's been going, however it's been going. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about what the embargo actually means for you and me, the economics of the embargo, because there's a lot to talk about there and it's really interesting, and at the end of the day, how to go about the embargo if you want to get Cuban cigars and stuff like that. So it's going to be good. We're going to dive in now. All right, so to start off, we're going to talk about the demand of Cuban cigars now that the embargo has been lifted. What is demand, you may be asking? Well, I'll tell ya. Here's the definition. Basically, demand is how much of something people are willing to pay at a certain price. So as the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. This is true for anything. If I'm gonna go out and buy Gatorade, if Gatorade suddenly jumps up to 30 bucks a Gatorade, I'm gonna buy a lot less Gatorade, aren't I? So previously, Cuban cigars had a relatively low demand due to the illegality of Cuban cigars. You, they were they were hard to they're, you know, they're hard to find as well. The availability is low, which also plays into your demand for them. So if you can't get something, if you couldn't physically get Gatorade, you wouldn't go go out of your way really hard to get it unless you really really want a Gatorade, right? So the same is true of Cuban cigars. I want Cuban cigars, but it's before it wasn't worth it for me to try and find someone and try and find track down the right dealer that actually sells you know real Cuban cigars not the fake so it wasn't worth it to me well, what's changed is our availability to Cuban cigars and the legality of them now you and I can physically go to Cuba buy as many Cuban cigars as our little hearts desire and bring them back to America for personal use so you know in the end you no, know, you can't go to your tobacco shop and buy Bolivar or genuine Cohiba cigars, but you can physically go to Cuba and get them. So pretty much what I'm saying is, know a guy that goes to Cuba so you can buy them off him. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the supply of Cuban cigars. This is where things get kind of interesting because this actually ties into demand. Here's the definition of supply. Basically, supply is how much people are willing to supply at a given price. How much, what quantity of something they're willing to sell at a, at a certain price. The supply of Cuban cigars in Cuba has not changed. They are still making the same amount of Cuban cigars, and they are still selling the same amount of Cuban cigars. What has changed is the supply of Cuban cigars in America. Before, it was illegal to bring them here, therefore, people that could bring them here successfully, congrats, but for the most part, they weren't here. Now that they're legal, there's a lot more here. So not only has you know, demand shifted, but supply has as well. So now, in the end, we're seeing people pay, people wanting to buy more at the same price before, and people are wanting to sell more at the same price as before. For instance, if I wanted to buy a Cuban cigar before, if I wanted to buy one Cuban cigar, the price of that Cuban cigar would have been more expensive previously than it would be now, because there's more competition. There's more competition in this black market for Cuban cigars. That's something else we're going to talk about. What is a black market? Here's the definition of a black market. All you need to know is that a black market arises when the government has deemed something illegal to buy or sell. For instance, it's illegal to sell kidneys. People need kidneys though, so there might be a black market for kidneys that I don't know about. Who knows? But pretty much people want to buy Cuban cigars and they physically can't, so therefore they go to a black market and buy them illegal. Because of these black markets, we're seeing physically more cigars in the United States as, as compared to before. So due to this law change, we're seeing both demand and supply increase. These black markets present a win-win situation. 
For example, if I wanted to go to Cuba and buy a hundred cigars and bring them back to America, I could sell them at a profit that at the very least covered my expenses to go to Cuba. Not only do I profit off of this, but people that are buying the cigars are able to get Cuban cigars without physically having to spend time and money to go to Cuba and get these cigars. So everyone's really getting a deal all around. And that's the beauty of the black market, I suppose. When you let the market do its, you know, do its thing, good things tend to happen. Some side notes on this, first of all, is that substitutes, which are other cigars, you know, Dominican, Nicaraguan, Sumatran, Mexican, all, the, all these types of cigars, the demand for them will go down because of the increased demand in Cuban cigars. Instead of buying, because people have the option to buy Cuban cigars now, they may spend more money on Cuban cigars and therefore less money on these other cigars. So that's something to keep in mind. And also, compliments of Cuban cigars. What are compliments of Cuban cigars? Cuban cigars? That was crazy. Compliments of Cuban cigars would be things like maybe Cuban rum or a airfare to Cuba or maybe a cruise ship that takes you to Cuba. Things like these, we're already seeing JetBlue has now opened up routes to Cuba, I think St. Clara, Cuba. And Carnival Cruise Lines is toying with the idea of a cruise with Cuba as one of the destinations. It's, it's honestly a lovely area and you can take advantage of the agriculture, the clothing, the music, and the cigars and the rum. Woo! So, good news all around. This is a great thing. This is really good. So at the end of the day, the lift on uh, the Cuba embargo is good for pretty much everybody. It's going to increase business in Cuba. It's going to increase businesses such as JetBlue and Carnival Cruise Lines in America. If this trade gets completely you know, normalized to the point where retailers can sell Cuban products in their stores, we'll see an increase in businesses you know, for both of them. And you and I get to enjoy Cuban cigars now legally. So. This is this is a great thing. This is this is wonderful. Economics is great. Thank thank uh, Barack Obama for lifting that, and uh, we'll hope that uh, Trump doesn't embargo them again. You know who, who knows what that guy will do. So uh, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. I hope you found this educational, at least interesting. I found it interesting. Um, this is also doubling as a project for my econ class. So shout out to Mr. Butler. He doesn't know it yet, but we're gonna have Cuban cigars someday. It's gonna be great. We're gonna love it gonna talk about oh yeah I remember that video I made it was great <laughs> uh, anyway be sure to hit like subscribe all the other magic down there and I'll see you guys next time on go to cigars <laughs>